everybody. My hair is a hot mess today. It is freshly washed and doing its own thing. So this is not the same coffee that you saw me make earlier. I'm on my second coffee of the day. This one is a decaf one though because the anxiety is real at the moment. Like I, it's <laughs> life is a lot right now i feel like i said earlier in the year like i've really got a handle on things everything was super balanced and everything is like not not balanced at the moment and yeah there's been a lot of like time that i've had to take for other things so like therapy appointments because something very triggering happened recently and i had to go back into that and now my schedule is like very very full because i have all of these various different appointments going on and you know life is life is a lot right now i'm gonna put this down because i'm scared i'm gonna spill it on my shirt so yeah feeling a little bit wobbly at the moment so bear with me one of the appointments that i mentioned before though was actually a dental appointment that i had on friday <laughs> you guys I thought I was going in for like a 10 minute appointment. I went in at 2.30, lol, yeah, I know. I left at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. So I have my final dental appointment, well, my final orthodontic appointment on Thursday this week. This is how they are looking so far. I am really scared like that they're gonna be moving back. Like I'm really, really, like my anxiety is really clinging onto it at the moment. That they, I, I just have a wire on the back of my teeth and that's all that's like, holding the shiz together you know there's no nighttime retainer until thursday when i believe i get like top and bottom and we might make some tweaks if there's any tweaks basically this week is all about how my teeth kind of settle after what happened on friday i will share photos with you because i like to share here and you can laugh at me i basically went in to my appointment and my orthodontist was like are you excited because he was like adamant that this was the day that the invisalign was like no more, we were calling it quits. We'd had this before and he'd given me another round of three because the, this tooth just wasn't moving, it moved forward, but it wasn't moving down enough. And it still hadn't moved down. So I was of the opinion that I was just gonna have some more molds done and then come back in a week, get another set, like do this whole process again. And it's like quite, my dentist isn't local, so quite time consuming to like go to these appointments. And I usually try and sandwich it in with like other things like nails and stuff like that. So I was just prepared for this to be a bit of a, here we go again. And he was like, hmm, it's a stubborn one, that tooth. It's just genuinely not moving down. He was like, don't worry though, I can take care of that. I'll do it myself. And I was like, you, what? What are you talking about? Basically at first he was like, I'll just do it in the next like, you know, 20 minutes. And I was like, <laughs> I'm actually meeting a friend after this for coffee. So could we, could we prolong this? Basically he put a fixed retainer on my teeth. He was gonna have me just sit in the waiting room for like 20 minutes. I was like, I'm actually meeting a friend for coffee. So maybe we don't have to do it like so drastically and painfully, but he put a fixed retainer on my, like this half of my teeth. And I basically had to go for coffee looking like that. And oh my God, I've forgotten how painful train track braces were. Not for the teeth moving. I'm quite like chill with the feeling of moving teeth mostly, but it just in terms of it, it was like completely cutting up the inside of my lips because they obviously aren't used to that anymore. So I go back in and he's like, yeah, we, we've done some good movement. It's nearly there, but I'm just going to do the remainder myself. And I was like, what? I wish I'd been filming because I actually obviously didn't see what they were doing, but they pulled this tooth down to be in line with this tooth so yeah that that was painful but they look really good still look like my real teeth not like too perfect i mean i don't know he might shave this tooth down slightly he shaved this one down but now i feel like this one's slightly longer but i don't i kind of don't mind that i don't want my teeth like some people already used to think that my teeth weren't my real teeth and i don't really know if i want that like fake looking teeth look i'll put a little before photo or clip or something here but i look so weird right now because i'm just smiling <laughs> really weirdly but yeah really really happy with them i came out of that appointment and i was like oh my god i need a rosé ryan and i actually had a date night and i had to go straight like i was planning on going home and getting cute and i was in just like leggings and a crop top <laughs> and i had to just go to this date like that because i literally didn't have time to go home and change and stuff i was running so late so yeah i'm very interested to see what happens in this appointment on thursday in addition to my orthodontic appointment on thursday i also have nails on thursday so i'll bring you along for that and show you kind of like what i get done to my nails and all of that i actually don't know if i've shown you my nails at the moment but they are so cool ignore my like wonky finger i just have a really wonky finger it's so annoying but they're really cute they're like glitter wavy lines absolutely love them so i'm kind of really sad that they're gonna be going but i'm sure we'll do something else that's cool and then friday i have a hair appointment so i'm gonna bring you with me for that and talk you through everything that 
we do at the hairdressers. So yeah, basically we're having a beauty treatment heavy week. I'm really excited about that. I'm also gonna sit down with you in this video and answer a few questions because I know you guys have lots of questions on my tanning and I always get asked about what I use to like bleach the hair on my face and you know, Botox, fillers, all of that, whether I still have them, the whole shebang. I'm gonna sit down with you and do a little q and I put a box on my Instagram just to make sure I was definitely covering everything. But yeah, we're gonna chill together. I'll answer some of your questions. I've got a little mango order to go through with you guys as well that's just arrived, just like a few little bits. Me and my vanilla latte now are about to go into the bathroom. I need to tan. I've literally just showered this morning and I am, uh, I don't know if you can tell actually, I'm not really matching my face, but I did a good scrub. I now feel like my skin feels like baby skin. It feels so good. And I haven't put moisturizer on and nothing because I'm going to be putting all the tan on. I'm so excited. I've got something new that I want to try. I stupidly though put makeup on and I don't always do that before I tan, but yeah, man. come on anymore. Let's go. I am so happy with my makeup today. I used to need blush and I really like it. I like this lip combo and this blush combo. I've also gone back to using the Charlotte Tilbury powder bronzer, not the, what's it called? Not the contour one, but just the normal bronzer and I just absolutely love it. But yeah, I'm gonna crack on and get some tan on because I am filming a Zara haul tomorrow. It may have already gone up on Thursday or it might be up this Thursday coming. I'm really, <laughs> I can't remember my video schedule off the top of my head at the moment. Okay, that will, that will do. So, as you guys will know, when it comes to tanning, Saint Tropez are my absolute favorite, number one tanning brand to use. I bought their products, I think it was at the start of lockdown, I was really bored, and I saw someone used, I think it was the Purity Gel, and I went onto ASOS, I bought it, and I was like, oh my God, this product is so good. And that's when I really started getting into Saint Tropez products. Fast forward six months and they asked me to work with them and it's a love affair that has continued. We're now in 2022, I still love their products so much and I'm really excited to say that I'll be partnering with them again for this video. So this video contains a paid for integrated advertorial with Saint Tropez. Absolutely buzzing as always to be working with them. There is nothing better in this line of work than partnering with the brands that you love so much and I feel very fortunate that I'm in a position to work with the brands like the top brands that I love so much and absolutely nothing less. So thank you so much to Saint Tropez for partnering with me on this video. Now, as you guys will know, when you've seen me clearing out my beauty cupboards recently, I alternate between two tans. I alternate between the South Town Purity Bronzing Water Gel and the Lux Whipped Cream Mousse, which was limited edition. And I'm so excited to tell you that they have decided to make it a permanent fixture. It is back and it has a new and improved formula as well. And today I'm gonna to be trying it for the first time and I very rarely get to do like first impressions of products on camera. So I'm really excited to be trying it out and be giving you my thoughts on its new and improved formula. And they have also just released the Tan Tonic Glow Drops, which I'm so excited to try. I use the Purity Face Mist on my face hands and back but basically my face every single morning I do my back with the mist when i tan i do my hands with the mist every couple of days and then i do my face daily because my face just does not hold on to tan so with these it's very customizable you can use between two and six drops and you can either use them like alone or you can mix them in with a serum or a moisturizer if you want like a slightly more diluted effect i will probably go whole hog and just pop this all over my face. I think I'm gonna use this and trial this on Friday because today I've obviously really effed up and I'm already wearing makeup. I don't love tanning my face in the evening, it's just a personal preference. And the formula of this is a real skincare meets tanning formula. It plumps, it protects, it smooths fine lines, it reduces redness and gives a real sun-kissed glow. So yeah, buzzing to try this. It's got niacinamide, hyaluronic acid in it, echinacea, vitamin C, vitamin E, and detoxifying flower extract. There is so, so much packed into this. It's also dermatologically tested, non condogenic and safe for sensitive skins as well. So I'm hoping this is gonna be the one for my skin. I obviously love the mist so much. It's actually one of the only tanning products I can use on my face. So I'm hoping that this is gonna follow suit. And both this and the Lux Whipped Cream Mousse are 100% cruelty free and vegan too. But yeah, I'm gonna be testing out the Lux Whipped Cream Mousse today, which also is packed full of so many ingredients that are great for your skin. It has hyaluronic acid in it and vitamin E and both of those ingredients really help to hydrate your skin and prolong the wear of your tan and I always find this tan lasts so well on me, like so long lasting and it's so hydrating that I don't have to top up with a moisturizer in between tan. Like honestly, I don't have the 
driest skin in the world, but I actually never moisturize my skin like I don't need to because my Saint Tropez products keep my skin so hydrated. If I don't use them for a while, I actually find like I'm like, oh, I forget I need to use moisturizer because using these on a weekly basis really does help to keep my skin so hydrated. It also contains niacinamide and echinacea, and it's really great for evening out your skin tone, reducing redness, which I always find it really does. I find this also really plumps my skin as well. It always looks really juicy and healthy after I've used it. Even with the guy color on, it is like makeup for skin, but that kind of effect doesn't go away the second you wash it off. It's like, oh, it just looks like I've been airbrushed. And that's why I love the Luxe Whip Cream so much. And I'm hoping it's just even better now that it's been reformulated. Fingers crossed. Oh, we have a new nozzle. That is different, let me show you. So you're a fan without telling me you're a fan. So this is the new one. And this is the old one. Mmm, smells really nice. Like, I would say quite different to the original. Yeah. So I'm going to get tanning. I'll quickly do a little before shot so you guys can see the difference compared with the after. And also, before I get started, my top tanning tips, just to, I've done lots of content on this before so i will link a lot of like i've done reels and youtube videos so i'll link those if you want a really comprehensive overview in the info box below but my top tip would be if you're going to moisturize because i know some people like to do like their elbows like drier parts of their body my body doesn't get too dry so i tend to just like risk it but if there is anything that's particularly dry i always moisturize the night before not like you know a couple of hours because the residue is still there and actually when you're buffing in the product you are literally just going to like be taking the moisturizer that you put there and rubbing it around and that can really lead to streaking which we don't love i shave my legs either the night before or if i am gonna shave them i do it the day after a tan so either the day before day after not the day of and the reason i recommend that is because if you have sensitive skin and you shave right before you tan it might sting a little bit i actually used to suffer with it terribly before i switched to saint tropez and now i literally could shave my legs right before anyway but it's so ingrained in my routine to do it the night before i also just rinse off in the shower and only like wash where I really need to wash. I don't put shower gel all over my body. I read somewhere that it's something to do with like it changes the pH of your skin and it's not great for when you're tanning. So I, I read it somewhere and I now follow that. And then in terms of aftercare, I scrub every other day if I'm like, if it's summer and I'm really trying to like keep up the tan and I'll like top up twice a week. And scrubbing before you reapply at any point is crucial. But if you're topping up like regularly, say you have a lot of events that you're going to or whatever, or you're really just trying to get that tan to like build, which is what I tend to do in the summer. I like to be quite dark and I don't sit out in the sun. Exfoliating regularly in that case is absolutely crucial because it basically stops me looking patchy no matter how often I reapply and I love that. But yeah, I'm gonna pop this on. I'm gonna leave it on for a minimum of four hours. When I top up midweek so say i do this like on a sunday do the full four hours rinse off don't wash off the color starts to appear after eight hours so if you rinse this off after four hours and you're like mm, nothing's happened it's because the color actually just doesn't you only have to leave it on for four hours but it's not how long it takes to develop so yeah anyway i digress four hours on like say a sunday then Tuesday night, exfoliate, Wednesday morning, I could pop this on for literally like an hour or two and it would top up really nicely. If I didn't want to go darker, I wouldn't do it as long midweek, if that makes sense. So sometimes if I want to top up midweek and I literally want to just like give it that extra boost, I'll pop it on for an hour in the morning, shower it off, and it is like all developed and looks gorgeous and glowy by the evening. So if I have an event, that is like the ideal little quick boost that I give to my skin to get a gorgeous glow. Here we go. Looking good. Look at that color. Wow. I'll tell you what, there is nothing that makes me feel better than a fresh tan. It always puts me in a really good mood. Oh my god, it's dried. I swear it's dried quicker. Wow. Just doing an extra little layer on my chest because it never holds as well. Always do my neck. Oh, look. Oh. Look at that glow. You can see the difference between my back <laughs> and my front. Looks so good. Can't wait to show you guys the finished result tomorrow once it's all 
come out. Okay, cool. I need to do my back and the whole rest of my body now, so I'll be back with you in a bit. Ooh, I'm glowy. So glowy. I always love how this makes my skin look. Hair is done. Hair is done. Tell you what, guys. I am absolutely livid. For some reason, my info box for last night's video, which was spring wedding guest dresses, the video that takes me like days, if not about a week to produce in terms of all of the time for scouting all of the dresses, because I don't just go onto like one website and pick the first like five dresses I see. The scouting for the perfect dresses that not only do I like and they get my seal of approval, but that also work for a range of other human beings in terms of personal preferences of like more leg, less leg, more arm, less arm, more cleavage, less cleavage, appropriate for this, not appropriate for this. All of the different ranges that a human being could possibly want, trying to be modest, ones that are more revealing, all of that, spend so long picking the dresses, the dresses arrive, I veto about 50% of them because I'm like, oh, no, don't like that fabric, don't like this, don't like that. Okay, let's do the video. Film the video, do the info box, do the info box, one of the most crucial <laughs> points. And YouTube has basically made it so that my info box is not appearing. If that happens on this video, I will scream for one, but I'm just, as a backup, gonna post my info box. I keep eating my own hair. Just as a backup, I will post the entire info box in a comment and pin it. But if you cannot see it, I don't care if I've put if I've pinned it, if you can't see it, please let me know because I will be on at YouTube like a dog with a bone. Just an add-on to how I'm feeling at the moment. Okay, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about what I've had done because I've had quite a few things done since I've been released back out into the world post lockdown in the UK. So for those of you who haven't seen, I actually did this video for the first time during lockdown in 2020, very early on actually, I think as a way to basically reminisce over the treatments that I wasn't having done at the time, I wasn't able to have done, but I really enjoyed it because I, I felt like it gave a certain amount of transparency to like this is how I look and this is why I look this way. I will link the original video if you want to go and watch it because things have changed since then and there's certain things like people still think I have extensions in my hair and I don't have any extensions in my hair. <laughs> this is my hair. And my natural-ish colour, like we're trying to keep it looking as natural as possible. Those of you that have watched me for a long time will know that this is very, very, very close to my natural colour. My actual natural hair colour, I'll put a photo on screen here. It's a little bit harder to achieve because I think it's quite high maintenance and quite frankly, it's quite a boring colour to be that high maintenance with if you're like say darker and you're having to bleach your hair and maintain that to get that lightness. But I will talk to you fully about hair on Friday and what I have done, but basically the reason I have it done and dyed basically my natural colour is just because I have a lot of grey hairs and I don't like them. So yeah, no extensions, which is a big difference to I think when I filmed this video the last time. So I don't have that done anymore and I don't have filler put into my lips anymore. I haven't had that done since 2018. I had it for the first time in December 2017. Had it topped up I think in spring 2018 and then August 2018. My body basically does burn up filler quite quickly. The last time I had filler there was a lot put in my lips and it migrated and it was really annoying and in hindsight most people would probably pay to have it dissolved but I have faith that my body would break it down and it did break it down quite quickly compared to other people's. I would say that I don't think I have any filler left in my lips. It has been how many years? Four years? However, one of the side effects of the Moderna vaccine <laughs> is that if you have had filler it can almost like cause it to swell and just one side of my lip <laughs> just swelled slightly. I think I've spoken to you guys about it when it happened and it was really, really weird. And because of that, I don't think it's all gone, but it feels like it's all gone. My lips pretty much look very similar to how they looked in the first place, if I'm honest. Like if I kind of showed my lips without any lip liner, I've learned to really line them quite well. And I'm very rarely without any lip liner on, on camera, but yeah. They are a lot more chill now than they used to be. I don't have that migrated filler above, which is lovely. So those are the things that I have had done that I don't have done anymore. The other things I get asked about that I don't have done are lashes. I don't have lash extensions or anything. I'm actually wearing a mascara today, which is a new one that I've seen all over TikTok. And it looks amazing on TikTok and I don't think it's quite as good on me. I mean, it's very good. It's not 
as good as it looks on TikTok. I also don't have facials. I have just had really bad experiences with facials and my skin is quite reactive. I know what I like and there are a few facials that I really do like. So I love an Oskia facial because I know my skin really likes those products. So that's something that I will always opt for. I also don't do anything that's not like at home hair removal. I'm very basic with my hair removal as you guys will probably know from previous videos. So no like laser hair removal or waxing or anything like that. And the last thing that I don't have done is my brow my brows are very very low maintenance I literally just pluck them so yeah the things I have done are like priority for me and I really go hard for them but then everything else is kind of if I can do it myself I will do it myself one of the biggest questions I've had from you guys on Instagram as well is what is not worth it I kind of talked about this in my last version of this video where I talked through things I wouldn't do again but I fully as always reserve my right to change my mind because there was something that I did change my mind on and the first thing that I'm going to talk about where I think it's not worth it I'm gonna say not worth it right now, but it doesn't mean that I won't come back to this in the future. And that is filler. Filler really helped me at a time when I actually needed a confidence boost. Obviously further down the line, it went a bit too far and it migrated and that was really annoying. But the having a small dose put in really, really helped my confidence at a time when I really needed it. And now I'm very happy with the overall shape of my lips. I don't feel the need to have it like topped up at all. So that is something that for me is not worth it right now, but. I definitely am going to revisit it in the future, I would say. I just know what I am like. Lashes are also, I understand like some people really, really love their lashes. And I'm very fortunate that I'm blessed with good lashes. So take it or leave it when I say this. But for me, it's just not worth the money. I don't enjoy having them on. I just find it really... I don't, I don't love it and I don't love like when I have no makeup on. I will kind of want to look like I have no makeup on. The furthest I would go is like a lash tint and lift i've actually noted down extensions under not worth it and i think that was coming from at the time i noted it down because right now for me they wouldn't they wouldn't be worth it i wouldn't do it however another one that i reserve my rights to change my mind over because i know that at certain points in your life your hair changes it falls out i don't know that i'm not gonna like be like oh just you know a couple of tapes here and there for extra like volume if i've experienced some hair loss or something so for me right now they're not worth it but overall i did really enjoy having extensions and the extensions weren't the thing that ruined my hair. The going from basically black to red blonde really ruined my hair. So that is something that I would never ever do again. I'm just gonna stay my natural low maintenance color where possible. If I don't want to have my hair done for like three months, I don't wanna have to look like I haven't had my hair done for three months. I say this and my hair is probably the most like high maintenance now it's ever been, but it's just cause I really like to keep on top of it at the moment, especially with all the greys and stuff. Cause I am not into this growing old gracefully vibe you guys and i'm gonna say this because sometimes you're like i say things and some people get up in arms about it but sometimes i think those are the things that i wish someone else would say for me like it would make me feel better if i heard someone else say this i have really freaked out about obviously the past two years we've been locked up i've been so stressed and i totally understand that on the outside i do not have a life to be stressed about and people talk to me like i'm crazy when they're like why are you stressed and i'm like i am crazy i have poor mental health this is why I am stressed. Let me live. I feel like I look like I'd aged about a decade by the end of those two years. I'd obviously lost a lot of weight as well, so my face had really altered, and I was just feeling so self-conscious. I then obviously turned 30, and I was like, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not down for this. Like, I feel like I am about... 50 years old and there's nothing wrong with being 50 years old if i get to 50 years old i'll be a very lucky lady i'm just i'll be happy that i've got there but man i just really was struggling last year with aging like i feel like covid and the stress and then like the stress i swear to god brought on my gray hairs and then i had some wrinkles that were starting to set in and i was just like this is all too much in the space of like a year and at the end of last year when everything kind of started to feel a bit more normal i booked in to have botox again which i have talked about in my previous video and i kind of said i don't think i'll do this again i don't need it right now and that was me at the start of the pandemic and by the end of the pandemic i was like i feel like i have aged about a decade and no i'm not okay with this and i really want to be fully transparent on this and i know lots of people are like you know you've got 10 year olds watching you and they're gonna go and get botox number one they're not because that's not allowed but number two i don't have 10 year olds watching me 
I know my analytics and I know even like five years ago that it would have helped me to hear this because sometimes I think you look at people and you're like, I don't look like that. I do not look like that. I like the transparency. So that is just where I sit on YouTube is I will always be transparent with you guys because that's what I like to see. I mean, you can really trash me for having it done, but I could hide it and just not talk about it and just leave people guessing. And then I'd also be being trashed for that. So you can't win, but I'd rather be honest and talk about it. And if it helps you guys, or even if it helps you guys like, oh, cool, that's why she looks that way. I don't want to do it, but that's why she looks like that. Cool. So yeah, Christmas, I booked in to have Botox. I think I had it at the end of January. So this is my little forehead. I've got some movement. At first, I think I have a video clip of how it looks when it's just starting to set. And honestly, it's the funniest thing because my brows drop like a tiny bit just in the first, like for the first week or so. And so I constantly look like a little bit concerned. So yeah, after three days, you get really shiny forehead. It looks like you're basically wearing makeup for all the time, even when makeup isn't on. It's that like glowy and I just, it's a great few days. And then that kind of slowly fades after about two weeks. I think it is I start to get like my natural kind of texture back and then I would say after the two week period is where I start to get a little bit of movement back so I have like natural movement to my forehead but I'm not making faces that I don't want to be making basically when I went to my the dermatologist I go to is skin clinic in Brighton they have quite a few of them around the UK the doctor there he's really lovely and I basically said to him when he was like so what are your concerns and I was like just want to be able to lie <laughs> and he laughed i was like i don't like it when i get a christmas gift and i'm like panicking that my face is showing that i don't like it but yeah my point being i have had botox on the old forehead i'm exceptionally happy with it it's funny how something so small can make much like the filler of 2017 it's funny how something so small can make such a difference i really want this to be a space for like no judgment because like i said everyone has their like happy spot when it comes to beauty and how they feel about themselves and i think we get really judgy over like fillers cosmetic treatments any kind of treatment i don't really understand why i can be so tattooed and people chill about that but having just like a needle put in my forehead every so often is not okay but yeah do you agree disagree would love to hear your thoughts but yeah let's keep this nice for the people the sensitive souls out there that maybe are feeling a little bit fragile about turning 30 <laughs> just talking about myself there so that is what i've had done that i can't really like show you thursday i'm gonna go to my dentist and do my nails and then friday i'll talk you through my hair the hair is a whole routine and I actually, it's, it's a little bit high maintenance, but I really, really enjoy this routine. Okay, so it's about five o'clock. I've just rinsed my tan off. I left it on for a little bit longer because I got distracted editing. So I've just rinsed it off. I've patted myself dry. I never, tried to never rub. And I've left my makeup on, you may have noticed, which I don't normally do when I get in the shower. I was literally in there just to rinse my body. And one thing I hate is when I start taking my makeup off, and I've forgotten that I'm wearing tan and the water starts running down your arms and the tan is like rinsing off but then the guide color is like rinsing off and oh god it's no so yeah I got in the shower with my makeup on but now I'm about to take my makeup off and I'll be back with you in the morning to show you the finished result good i feel like a fresh juicy little grape and not the raisin i felt like yesterday <laughs> honestly i always think that the lux whipped cream mousse gives you like this natural like highlight and glow i guess because it's so hydrating it just makes my skin look so luminous and so glowy and also i think we need to take a moment for the fact that i literally yesterday i was doing some work and i was sat like this so i put my tan all the way up to here and i was sat like this and i don't have like disaster lines i always say this tan is if you're like new to tanning it's gonna feel a bit different to like regular tan and it takes a bit of getting used to however if you're super new to tanning you won't know any different it's great if you're newer to tanning or not amazing at tanning because it just seems so like foolproof like i've never had a streak with it like even when i think oh no i've like sat weirdly and i'm definitely gonna have like a tan mark it never 
happens. I'm not sure if they'll even let me say this, but I feel like it's kind of disaster proof. I mean, don't obviously quote me because I don't want to get in trouble, but I feel like it's really, really foolproof. Like, look at that. I'm terrible at doing my back as well. So yeah, very happy. But yeah, anyway, today I am filming a Zara haul. I actually have a little manga order here as well. Based off of, I think, one of my previous videos, I said that I like went to link a few bits and I bought some more bits. I actually don't know if that made it into the vlog. I can't remember. But yeah, I have some bits to show you, which I'm just going to do really quickly like an express haul number one is this top which definitely it doesn't look see this is the thing on camera this looks just like a normal cream in real life it is basically yellow so i understand now that i'm looking at it on my camera why it would have photographed on mango as like a regular cream because it comes off on camera like a regular cream but in real life this is very very yellow real, real see-through vibes this would definitely need a bra it would have to be a strapless one because very wide shoulders comes down to about here so like the length is nice but yeah really not down for the see-through vibes okay this little brother is really cute not ridiculously see-through which is good because i kind of had a vision of wearing this like under a blazer i thought that would look really sweet let's try it with a blazer and let's all ignore the fact that i'm still wearing my cream cycle shorts yeah okay so cute Love that, with a little high-waisted skirt, leather trousers, really cute. Love the little scalloped edging as well. It's just cute, like, either as underwear or, like, layered underneath bits. Okay, so this is the body that I went back for. This is the body that was originally meant to come in my last vlog. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it at the top of the screen. Unfortunately, it's, like, a little bit big. These bits are actually quite loose, so I don't feel particularly secure. I think there's a lot of, like, excess material as well, because it is just a little bit big. But yeah, let me know. What do you guys think? I thought this would have been really cute with like a pair of high-waisted trousers, but I'm just not sure it's like giving what I wanted it to give. Okay, so this is the other body I ordered. I saw this and I just loved it. I thought this would be really cute again with a skirt, high-waisted trousers, and then a blazer over the top, but just have something cute underneath the blazer, but also like gives a little bit of something without being like too simple i thought this was really nice be really nice for like date nights dinner and drinks with the girls layered up under like a white shirt as well could still be really cute it fits really well compared to the other one so the sizing and mango is slightly inconsistent for me at the moment but no biggie yeah i really like this very cute okay next we have this little black top which looks so much better on the model than on me i have a bit too much cleavage for this i despise anything where you have a cut out here and then you get this line in the middle i just really don't love but overall the top is really cute if you didn't mind this i think it's a lovely top does anyone else get bothered by this or is this just me is this just a byproduct feeling of having grown up in the 90s <laughs> like let me know everybody it is my final dental appointment day teeth are staying in place so far i'm quite impressed actually i'm just heading to my dentist now i'll show you where it is in a second i go to uh, i think it's called brighton dental clinic i'll link it in the info box but i'm just getting my final set of retainers today and uh, making sure everything is all okay and not moving because my teeth really like to do that and then I'm going to be off to get my nails done. So if you know Brighton, it's this building here above the subway. Still haven't got myself a subway in all of my visits here. Thank you. guys so this is the before and after of the top of my tea kind of like from the under the underneath I guess so the most important tooth is like this one on this side has now been completely brought out and it won't show but we brought that one down as well okay we are all done my mum is with me I forgot to say there she is look at her she's so cute we're going to get our nails done now we've finished really early so I'm thinking it's time I introduced you to Joe and the Juice, so that's what I'm gonna do because the Rebuild Smoothie is like my love language. So we are getting our nails done now. This is where I go to get my nails done. Ella Boo's is in the Jury's Inn in Brighton. Ooh. Hello! <laughs> So 
So I actually only had my nails done like two weeks ago. So Ella is gonna just do infills on them because she uses Biab and it lasts me a really long time, which I love. We are all done. So we have the Teddy Biab by the gel bottle, which is the base color on my nails. And then we have this white, which is called Daisy, which is also by the gel bottle over the top. And then a top coat as well, which is just clear. I love them. So cute. Good morning everybody. I am feeling very well rested today. I didn't actually say yesterday, but not last night, the night before. Nala was up at 3am throwing up. So yesterday I didn't vlog a lot. I was very not with it, but feeling really good today. Went to bed at half 10, got up nice and early and I'm feeling good. This morning I'm going to get my hair done, so I've just clipped it back. And I need to sort out my facial hair a little bit before the weekend. I don't think you'll be able to see it. The light in here is really funny today. Basically this Sunday, this room isn't great. But yeah, whenever I talk about it, I always get asked what I use. This is it. I will link it in the info box. You can get it from like any drugstore, boots, super drug, anything like that. You can also get it on Amazon. So nice and easy. And you just literally follow the directions on the back. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do this morning. I always get asked when I talk about bleaching my facial hair, which mainly just appears here, but it also appears between my brows and my hairline why i talk about it and is it okay to be talking about it should i be encouraging people to do it i know what i'm going to say is i was so self-conscious about this when i was a kid now i really don't care when i was growing up i used to care about what girls would think about what boys would think now i really really don't care the only reason i actually do it now is because there are very ignorant people that aren't subscribed to my channel but just come across it and comment a lot on youtube and it kind of sometimes takes away from what I'm actually talking about in a video and it's just annoying and I don't need to be reminded of it every day and it also hurts my inner child if I'm being very very honest but also the reason I talk about this is one because I know so many other people go through the same thing and they feel better knowing that someone else is like in the same boat as them but also when I was younger I wish that I had known that this existed sooner if you don't want to do it don't feel like you have to do it don't do it but if you want to do it I get it from booze So that is all done. Really, really nice and easy. I won't have to do that really now for another month or so. I think I kind of roughly do it monthly, but to be honest, I don't really keep track of it, but I know I don't do it very often. But now I'm gonna put some moisturizer on my face and I'm gonna mix in some of the tan tonic glow drops. I think I'm gonna go for quite a few. I wanna test it out. You know me, I'm not afraid of a bit of glow to my skin. So I've got my moisturizer here. Here we go. Five. I'm not brave enough to go to six. And then mix that together. The only thing I would say is I would probably, if I did this again, I don't know if I'd mix. I think I like to use both hands. <laughs> Unless I get a little mixing palette, I think I might just apply the drops both hands all over the face just because I don't like using one hand. And I'm obviously gonna wash my hands after this. I feel glowy already, is that weird? Is that right? <laughs> oh my god. It's sunny and I'm getting my hair done today. What a great day. So today we are dyeing the root mm -hmm. because I have greys at the back. Yes. And we're doing a toner because my hair gets quite warm. Like you can always see where the light hits, it starts getting a bit. This camera doesn't really show as much, but it gets very, very warm under the light here. You need to trim. I think, I think I'm due the cut this time. definitely do a trim. Yeah, Carla's very good with reminding me to cut. Like, I think it's a testament to your hairdressing that it's grown this much and you cut. How often do you cut it? Every, every other. Every other. So every eight weeks. Yeah, I think it needs it needs a little bit this time. I begrudgingly do it because I know how much you've like saved my hair. So I'm like, okay, we listen. Yeah, so when I first started coming to Carla, 
I had a bob. If some of you were around then, you will remember the bob. Well, I didn't have a bob, I had my broken hair and then we did the bob and now it has grown. What toner are we putting on it? We are using Gold Brow HGB, so it's like a golden like, blonde. Because I used to have an ashy blonde, Car didn't like I? Caramelly colour. Yeah, yeah, we did used to. The HGB we've been doing since around October, I want to say. Yeah. And it's like a nice, like warm. I think I suit quite a warm blonde. We warm the ends and then we ash the root. And we ash the root because the root goes really red. So we do toner every four weeks, like clockwork, and then every eight weeks at uh, every other appointment we do toner and a cut and a highlight balayage oh that was the other question people were asking is do i have highlights or do i have balayage or is it a mix of you have like a balayage mixed in with like a root smudge okay there's so much blonde underneath that like pops through so it doesn't really need like too much more otherwise i'll just carry on getting blonder and blonder but every so often we take the blonde further up again oh we did the top last time didn't we yeah we took it took it slightly higher yeah and then we just that, that's where we smudge it through so we just smudged it through just to make it look just that color pop perfect so yeah this time it's just we're just skipping that and then roots toner Getting rid of the sparkly ones. <laughs> the sparkly and ones. Smudge that through carla awesome. either calls them the sparkly ones or nature's highlights <laughs> So this is the toner going on. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I have been toned and coloured and now we are going to have a little trim and we're also going to add some shape around my face as well because things are getting a bit long over here. I will pop a photo of like my, my inspo pick here but then we're doing like a bouncy blow dry after because the last one Carla did was sensational and lasted me like five days so I have high expectations. <laughs> it was great, I didn't have to style my hair for so long so. Fingers crossed it does the same this time. So I'm back from the hairdressers. This is what my hair looks like after a fresh cut and colour. Plus the little addition of new short pieces, which I haven't had for a very long time now. But yeah, this is kind of how the root dye and toner comes out. Just gives my hair a really nice like caramelly warm blonde kind of like tone to it mixed in with all the brown like there's lots of different tones going on in my hair and like when you flip it you can really see all the lighter kind of tones that pop through but we keep the top nice and dark yeah that is what i have done at the hairdressers hopefully it was useful for some of you and if you want to take in any of this footage into your hairdressers you can i think that will be like the most helpful thing also my hairdresser was saying that like if you for example don't have greys that you want covering or you just don't care about covering them the dye at the root not necessary that's just a me thing but isn't going to be right for everybody and then depending on whether you're ashy or warm will depend on how regular you want or need a toner so just how high maintenance you like to be i like to look low maintenance but i'm happy to be high maintenance so yeah that's kind of why we do what we do and then we do the highlights underneath just as and when but not like too routinely because i don't want to be blonde i just want to look like my natural color but like to have depth and like this kind of like shine and all of that also i feel like we're starting to get some real warmth coming through on my skin now i've had the drops on my skin for about six hours now i'd say i'll do a little before and after in a couple of hours before i wash my face for the evening but so far so good very impressed the color that's coming through is really like natural and lovely and it like suits my olivey skin tone so like very adaptable i would say really really lovely the only thing i did add on after by the way after i did the moisturizer and the drops i popped spf on so that's the only thing that i have like on my skin and then a little bit of concealer under my eyes and i also powdered because the shine was real but yeah this is how it's looking after just a few hours really impressed but i think that is all of my beauty routines covered for this video i actually have a banging headache now so i am going to go i hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope that it's been helpful if there's anything that you've ever really wondered about in terms of like beauty routines treatments anything i've had done all of the hair stuff because i know there have been so many questions on everything hair related so hopefully that was helpful i will pop links to everyone that does everything in the info box below if you need that but that is going to be it for me today thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Love you, bye.